It's time to welcome the Wine Ladies with Georgia and Suzanne. An entertaining hour topped up with great ideas about wine, where to dine, anything and everything to do with the vine. Great conversation, lots of laughter, guests from all walks of life, food and wine, music, art, sports, and much more, all on The Wine Ladies. Hi, everybody. It's us, The Wine Ladies. I'm Georgia. And I'm Suzanne. And welcome, everyone, to thatchannel.com, to The Wine Ladies Show. We are live here today. And I also would like to welcome our listeners on the FM dial on the Jewel Radio Network, 88.5 in Toronto, 98.5 in Ottawa, and 107.7 in Hawkesbury. Welcome, everyone, to The Wine Ladies. Welcome, everybody. I also want to mention to everyone to make sure you keep up with us on Facebook, our fan page, thewineladies.com. We always have something going on. And I want to say congratulations to Anitra Byers. Anitra won the uh, instant wine refresher, the Ravi, for answering the question, who is the Greek god of wine? <laughs> and of course, it was Dionysus, and everybody knew, but Anitra's name was drawn. So congratulations, Anitra. Okay, now before we get on with the show, we always like to toast our guests in studio, as well as our viewers and our listeners out there. So let's raise our glasses, Georgia. Welcome everyone to the show, and we're looking forward to a fabulous show today. Cheers, everybody. Welcome. You know, I also want to mention that, as usual, Suzanne and I are going to be going to be doing our The Wine Lady Spotlight today, and we're going to be departing away from the vine just for today, and we're going to be heading over to the Juniper Berry. So yes, that means we've got a wonderful premium gin. More about that a little bit later in the show. Okay, so let's get on with the show. Now today we're going to be heading out west to the beautiful province of British Columbia. And of course there's been a lot of activity there in the past little while. The Vancouver 2010 Olympics have been going on. Well, you know what? It's not just the athletes that have won all the gold medals over there, <laughs> but the beautiful wines of British Columbia are, are gold medal winners as well. So we're going to be talking about that today. And to help us do that, uh, we have in studio with us sommelier and founder of Dine and Vines. Uh, Mark Moffat is here with us and Mark has also brought along a collection of fine BC wines over there. Welcome Mark to the show. Thank you. Great to have you here. I'm very excited to pour these wines. <laughs> and as we are. <laughs> Some, yeah, with everything. There, there's wine of course. The perfect marriage with wine is can I say it? Say it. Cheese. 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 That's the only perfect marriage. No, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> so give us, to give us all the cheesy facts, we have the uh, Canadian ambassador himself here. Uh, we have Gerth Pretty, who is a professional chef. He's a um, author and uh, the cheese ambassador of Canada. Is that correct? That is that is the right term? That is correct, Suzanne, yeah. Okay, so welcome to the show. Thank you very to much. To everybody. Looking forward to it. Oh, good to have you here. The big cheese, the cheese guru. You the go by like yeah. You <laughs> go by a lot. Star Canadian cheese dream team to go with the delicious wines from British Columbia. The dream ah. team. The dream team of cheese. Okay. Oh, awesome. I'm looking forward to the aroma in here is already like, the wow, wine, it is cheese. just amazing. Mm. Yeah. Now, Mark, are you, you were, you're, are, you're from out west originally, aren't you? I, I am, well. I spent most of my adult life out west, so okay. I consider myself a west coaster now. Oh, all the way west, like from Vancouver? All or? the way west. Uh, I was Whistler, Vancouver, uh, Okanagan, so I've uh, done it all and spent many, many years through the, uh, through the wine country. Ah, so do you get back there often? I get back, I should get back once a year, at uh -huh. least once a year, sometimes twice, depending on the season, I'll go back summer to tour the wineries and winter to go skiing. Oh, so were you perfect. born out west? No, I, I'm, uh, I hate to say this. <laughs> I'm a, I'm a, I was born as a central Canadian, but my heart lies on the west coast. Oh. Okay. And what's wrong with central Canadian? Well, he didn't that, mean it, folks. Uh, he didn't mean it. That, that, that means Baker Lake Northwest Territory. Yes. <laughs> and Gurney, no, we know, is born in, in Quebec. He's a Quebecer. Yeah, from Montreal. And from Montreal. As George and I, we're also Montrealers as well, but we're now living in Ontario mm -hmm. and uh, loving it, mind yes. you. Yeah. And uh, Canada's a great place. Lots of fabulous provinces mm -hmm. from coast to coast. Yeah. Now this Absolutely. is a very exciting time for for everybody uh, for Vancouver having the the hosting the Olympics there, um, and I think this is a perfect opportunity for us to showcase some of the wonderful wines that are being made now in BC and also some of the fantastic cheeses. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know, Mark. Maybe we can start with you. We can get a, sort of a broad picture of the of BC as a wine growing region. 
Absolutely. I mean, British Columbia, people don't realize, is the wine growing uh, in, in BC is quite vast. If you look at it on a map, uh, from tip, sorry, from top to bottom, mm -hmm. it takes up uh, one degree of latitude. Mm. So it's quite uh, quite long and expansive, yes. and you have different microclimates happening. Including from top a desert, to apparently, right? Very, very bottom of the Okanagan uh, in a Soyuz. Canada's only desert, mm -hmm. where you're seeing Syrah, some Chardonnays, uh, a little bit of Merlot, but Syrah and Chardonnay, absolutely. And when you're standing there, you can actually see the geography change as you're looking at the Washington border, from the, the desert and the vineyards yes. to the, I believe it's the apple and peach orchards uh, in Washington state. Ah. And then as you go north, it becomes lusher and greener as you mm -hmm. head into Naramata and Summerland, and then back up into, uh, into Kelowna, where you know, you're growing uh, growing grapes in the spring and summer, and you're skiing at Big White in the winter. Mm -hmm. So as you get north there, you actually they have to be careful about the the cold temperatures because yes. they do get um, below, well below freezing. So they're always having to monitor in that area mm -hmm. uh, what they're doing. So what grape varieties would they be growing up there in Kelowna? Uh, they're gr they're growing Riesling, they're growing Cab, they're growing Chard. Mm -hmm. uh, they're just they have to be a little more sensitive and careful with what uh, what the climate is doing. Right. Um, with Mission Hill, for example, uh, they have vineyards in Kelowna, in Naramata, in Oliver, in Asoyuz, all the way ah, down. Oliver. So when they're when they're blending, for example, they can use the best from each each parcel of land. So if you happen to get too cold in Kelowna, they can crop things back right. and do some work out of uh, Oliver, so Asoyuz. Is that what Aramata. they're doing for their Five Vineyards label? Five Vineyards is is mm -hmm. uh, basically uh, a blend or an assemblage of different vineyards that they have. And what about the cheese? Is cheese in BC different than cheese in Quebec and cheese in Ontario, Girth? Well, Tell us it's, a little bit about it's that. similar as to wine, where in France we use the term terroir, you know, mm -hmm. depicting wine. It's the same thing regarding cheese. Because whatever the animals are feeding on, it's mm -hmm. going to affect the flavor of the milk. It will be right. reflected in the right. milk. Exactly. Yeah. So the two cheeses I have from BC both come from the Kootenai Alpine mountain region. So again, yeah. close to the Okanagan Valley. Mm -hmm. And you know, so the herds of the cows are up there, way up in the mounds, eating lush vegetation. And you know, if you compare that cheese with a cheese made on Salt Spring Island, well, there you'd expect the cheese maybe to be a little bit saltier because of the salty mist uh -huh. coming from the Pacific. Yeah. So yes, there's different flavors in the different regions of BC as there is different re flavors in cheese coming from different provinces as well. Mm -hmm. That's so, interesting. Yeah. Are there also AOCs when you know how they have the Appellation d'Origine mm -hmm. Controlée for wines? And I know they have like in France, Roquefort, and they have Gruyere in yep. uh, Switzerland and Manchego. Uh, um, is it Manchego, the, uh, the cheese? From uh, Spain, I believe, from Spain? It, I believe it is protected it comes from as, La Mancha well. as well. It's funny you mention that because I just received an email from a colleague of mine saying that in North America, the different governments are looking in the possibilities of mm -hmm. creating special designations for oh, cheese. Wow. So awesome. she said, if you want to participate, contact this person in Agri-Food and Agriculture Canada mm -hmm. to give your two cents worth in there. Not at the moment. We don't have anything like that set up. Right. Because too many of our cheese makers are, are creating so many different kinds of varieties of cheese, but not specifically in one region. Like say uh, Parmigiano Reggiano yes. is made south of the Po River. Uh -huh. If it, that type of cheese is made north of the Po River, it's called Gurano Padano. I well, you know, yes. we gotta just uh, before we get on with the show, I just mm -hmm. want to mention to everybody out there, remind everyone that the wine ladies are going to be going to Spain June mm -hmm. 2010, and we invite you all to come with us a 10-day tour to the Rioja, Madrid, Barcelona. What else are we going to be doing, Georgia? Well, first of all, actually, we only have room for 30 people. So <laughs> okay, so not a generous invitation. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know one of the things that we're going to be doing that I think is going to be really cool, we're going to be in Barcelona, and we are also going to be visiting the uh, Salvador Dali Museum, mm -hmm. wow. which I think will be really fun. I mean, that that kind of art, I find, is really interesting. It's mm -hmm. intriguing, and it, you wonder, like, what was in his mind, you know, when he was making those creations? What wine was he drinking? That's it. Exactly. <laughs> Jeez, was he well, it's going to be a fabulous, fabulous trip, and if you want to hear more about this, go to thewineladies.com, and also, for the complete podcast, of the show it's thatchannel.com slash the wine ladies it's going to be called beautiful british columbia and it's wines